Hi there, and welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. Today, I wanna to talk to you about retirement income. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what I call the three stages of retirement income use. In other words, how people really spend money. And the difference between that and what the financial planning industry generally puts forward as uh, a way to plan for retirement income. Let me explain it this way. Most financial planning programs will show you that when you retire, let's use 65 as the age, and at some point, 100, and likely life expectancy somewhere in here. From age 65, when you do your financial planning with your advisor, you come up with a number. How much do you need to live on? And as you get closer to that age, it becomes a bit, a bit clearer, and you have to match that with what you have available in terms of resources and all of that, and of course you understand that. But let's say uh, this is the number. It doesn't really matter what the number is for my analogy today. What most financial planning programs will do is they will simply model the fact that you will need X dollars, let's call it 5,000 a month, okay? You need 5,000 a month to live on, and as you get older, inflation will take hold. And by the time you pass away, that number is more like, let's say 130,000 a year. Yeah, okay, 5,000, let's call it 60,000 a year, okay? So you need 60,000 a year to start with. And by the time you get to life expectancy, just extrapolating the numbers out at maybe two or 3% inflation, that number becomes 130. I literally picked that off the side of a bus, so I have no idea if it's correct, but it's gonna be close. Um, but the problem, there's a problem with that because that's not how people spend money. So I wanna talk about three stages of retirement that I thought of, you'll be able to tell that I named them, and they are gallivanting, grandkids, and getting old. So here's how people usually spend money in retirement. It's kind of broken up into three segments. One segment is, let's call it uh, 65 to 75. Might be a bit longer, and a lot of it depends on your health and what you've done before, how active you are, what you want to do. A lot of people like to retire when they first, or <laughs> like to travel, I should say, when they first retire. So what does that look like? Well, it's probably not 60,000 a year. It's probably 70 or 75,000 a year. And that, that may go up a little bit because you're continuing to spend. And then at 75, you have this sort of time period, maybe you've had some health issues, hopefully not, but it happens. And people tend not to spend as much because they're staying home more. And that's the grandkid stage. So this is the gallivanting stage where you're off traveling and doing various things, you know, I mean, 65 to 75, that's, I don't know if it's a new 45 to 55, but it's, um, it's certainly a lot younger than it used to be in our parents' uh, era. And so, you know, friends, friends of ours that are in that, in that age category, 60 to 65, they're extremely active. And so it could be that, that you're doing traveling a lot more. But let's just say it's 65 to 75, it's kind of the first stage, you're doing a lot more traveling, you're gallivanting, so you're doing more. But then at 75, something happens. You decide to not travel as much, or maybe there's been a, a health scare or a health event, and one of you is not as healthy as before, so you need to stay home, or the insurance, the out-of-province insurance cost goes way up. You're not able to travel as much. Maybe you do some Canadian travel. Actually, I talked to a friend of mine the other day, and he said, our plan is, of course he's an engineer, so he's got it all planned out, he said, our plan is to do international travel for the next eight to 10 years, and then we'll do our Canadian travel. There's a lot of places in Canada we still wanna see, and we'll do our Canadian travel between 75 and 85. Maybe that's a good plan, because you don't have to worry about the out of country coverage. So sometimes the, the costs will actually go down, and yes, they'll, they'll go up with inflation, but they won't be to the extent it was before. That's the grandkid stage. That may go on for an extended period of time. And then, so that section maybe is 75 to perhaps 90 if you're, 
if you're fortunate enough to live that long, I don't know if that's fortunate or unfortunate, as long as you have good quality of life, it's great. But maybe to age 90, you're more staying home more, you're not uh, doing that level of traveling internationally and that sort of thing. But then the last stage, so we have gallivanting, where you're traveling, we have grandkids, where you're staying home more, and then we have simply getting old. It had to be a G. So sorry for the irreverence, but the action, but the fact of the matter is, is as we get a lot older, there's elder care. And that can look more like a hockey stick in terms of expenses. I don't know how many of you watching this have been dealing with parent issues, trying to get, you know, mom or dad into a home or you know, they, one of them's passed away and now you have to deal with the other one because they can't take care of themselves. And depending on where you are, certainly here in Ontario, uh, the system is not that great. Uh, the people in it are wonderful. They do their best, but the system is not that great. And so there's a lot of things that you have to learn about and a lot of things you have to do to be able to get people the care that they require. Well, I don't know that it's going to get any less expensive, Perhaps we'll figure out how to make it a bit more convenient. But the fact of the matter is, you may be spending a lot of money in the final years of life for elder care, long-term care, maybe in-home care, which is extremely expensive, but people want to be in their home, which is understandable. So the reality is there's a big difference between how most financial planning programs say we're going to spend money and what actually happens. Whether this is an accurate representation, I don't know exactly, but I do know that in life, we tend to spend more like this than we do like just a straight sort of, everything gets a little bit more expensive each year. Now, what does that mean? Well, you might need more on the front end. Now, if you need more on the front end, at the same time that there's a serious market downturn, you need to have something in place that makes sure that you've got a guaranteed level of income for your basics. So that if you, it, like if there's a market meltdown or something and your investments, some of your investments tank, you might not, you might want, not want to take those trips. You might not be able to take as many, or you might have to skip a year or whatever. You need to have a contingency plan so that at least your, your minimum uh, amounts to not well, not just survive, but your minimum amounts that you need to live every day in your hometown are taken care of on a guaranteed basis. We call that the guaranteed floor, and then build from there to be able to do the things that you want to do. The five years before retirement and the first five years of retirement are crucial. That 10 years is a crucial time period for anybody who's moving from working to not only not working and not getting a paycheck, but actually starting to draw on the income, uh, that on the um, investments that they've created. So if that's you, you need to make sure that you have a conversation with your advisor about, uh, you know, what, what are my spending patterns really gonna be? What do, you, what do I wanna spend? And then you have to match that up with what you have available in resources and figure it out. Because if you're just naively going in to say, well, you know, this is, this is kind of how we're, how we're modeled out, and then two years in, you're like, wow, you know, I want to go on that. We want to go on that trip or we want to do this or that. And you end up dipping more into your investments than you had planned for. If that happens, it, it could be a problem down the road at, at minimum. At worst, if that happens at a time right before maybe a market crash and now your asset base is reduced, then you've got a real problem. So getting that guaranteed income, sharing that risk, maybe with an insurance company or something like that where you've got that guaranteed base income if you don't have a pension plan is a good idea to look at. So there's your gallivanting, grandkids, and getting old, three stages of retirement spending that is probably a bit more realistic to how people actually live. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Whiteboard Wednesday.